Hello, this is Mariska van der Veer for Split Toe Stampers and today I'm going to show you how to turn a stamped impression or a printed digital image into a 3D paper piece image. You can see that this is completely 3D. I'm going to start um, by uh, um, printing or stamping a couple of uh, images very close to each other. These are the Naughty Puppies by Wee Stamps. Uh, I used digital images available from Wee Stamps, but you can also uh, purchase stamps directly from Whimsy Stamps. I'm going to start coloring. Uh, first you're going to decide how many layers you want. Uh, I'm going to start with the head. I want a base head and then I want the snout uh, on top of the head. So what I'm going to do so I'm going to start with this little image on the left. I'm going to start coloring this with my Copic markers and I'm going to do it quickly. And now I'm going to do the mouth part, uh, or the snout, I think you call it in English, um, on a higher level. So I'm going to use the second image to color that. So that's the next layer. And I'm going to continue like this until I have the whole image colored only in several images. So I have that finished and prepared for you. As you can see, like I did just now, I colored the head on the first stamped impression. I colored the snout on the second. I want the nose to be on top of the snout, so I colored that one in the third. Um, the ear has an inner ear which I colored in this one it has uh, a fur, a furry part of the uh, ear that's behind the head I colored that one in this image and then on top of that is going to be a little flap of the ear and I colored that one in this image every time I make sure that the different parts I color that are going to be on top of each other don't touch each other when I color now I'm going to color um, shading and this uh, uh, needs some explaining. And when I'm finished, I'm going to start paper piecing things on top of each other. When I look uh, um, at the side of an image, I don't want to see white uh, uh, underneath it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to decide what's going to serve, what uh, um, a joining part of a piece that I colored is going to serve as a base to put the next uh, little piece on. In this case, like I mentioned, this is the head. I'm going to see if I can get you a little closer. This is the head. Um, this part is going to go on top of that part. So I'm going to color this part with the base color. It's the uh, color that I use as the darkest shade. That's the part. That's the color I tend to use. And uh, I use a W5 Copic marker. But if you choose to use another medium like pencils or whatever you can choose your favorite color that you use as a shading color this will look the most natural so now I've colored this completely with a gray color um, so and, and uh, I'm going to use this later on to put glue on and then put that piece that I've cut out at that time on top of that part again uh, the nose is going to go on top of this so again this is going to be Gray. I'm going to color that carefully, um, and I'm going to continue doing this. So the hand is going to go on top of the flap of the envelope. So this needs to be gray. Now you do this for every single part of your image. You don't need the complete part. So if you want, uh, for instance. Uh, the ear, the flap of the ear, that's going to go behind the head. I don't have to color the entire head. 
I just need a little bit to put underneath the head and to put a little glue on later on. So I just color this little part. I'm going to continue doing that and I've got that prepared until you have every bit of shading, a, a bit of uh, uh, a base colored with gray. As you can see I did that here. Um, I need scissors or a knife. I prefer scissors but you can use a crafting knife. It doesn't matter what kind of scissors you use, just use precision scissors. Very sharp ones. Um, that works best. Okay, so I'm going to cut now and I'm going to cut not just the part that I colored. Um, what should, should I I'll cut this. I'm not just going to color, cut out the part that I colored, but also I'm going to color, uh, cut out the adjoining base pieces because you'll need those uh, to glue the top parts on later on. I hope I'm doing this so you can see it. Again, you don't need the complete parts. See, I just I kept a rim because that belongs to the body, so I kept a little rim there. I just need a little rim to put my glue on later on. And I'm going to do this to all the little pieces with the adjoining uh, gray areas that I colored. So, now I've got this little piece of the head uh, cut out. And normally I would first cut out all the little pieces, but I've got that prepared, so I'll show you that later. I'm now going to start see, let, show you what the next step is going to be. The next step is going to be coloring the sides of the little cutout pieces. Um, as you can see, the sides of the pieces are white, which is normal. When you look on top of the image, you also see little white pieces. That's because when you cut, you uh, will always, uh, sometimes a little bit of the side comes curling up, doesn't look very sharp. So what I do, and I hope I can show you properly, properly is uh, I take my uh, Mento Jewel Marker, that's the marker I use for this, but there are several markers I know in the mar uh, uh, available that will do this, and I go around the sides very quickly. I'm not going to stay very long because then the ink will sink through and I will get black um, spots on top, but I don't know if you can see, but it's much sharper now on this side of the, of the cutout image uh, as it is on that side. Also, when you look at the side, it's going to be black and not white. I want it to be black. So this is going to be the next step. I'm going to do this to the to all of the cutout pieces, but um, uh, sometimes I decide to create my own layers. So I'm not going to use the lines the artist drew, um, like I did with the snout. Um, and I have that piece already um, here. Um, the snout wasn't uh, a, a normally a, a, an extra layer. Uh, I'm only going to color the sides where there are black lines on top. Where there aren't any black lines, where I created my own uh, lines, I hope you can see, I keep it white. That's better. That looks much, much, much better at the end. So I do this to the complete. Oh, sorry. I do this to the complete uh, cutout image. Next step is I'm taking, um, when you have very small pieces, you want to use tweezers because that's just too hard to keep it in your hands. Next I'm going to use my embossing mat, which is a little soft mat, and embossing tools, which are sort of pens with little bulbs at the end. Uh, uh, I have different sizes of these, I also have a very large one. I decide uh, for every piece if I use a small or a larger one. The larger the piece, the larger the bulb you want to use. I'm going to put the, uh, the cutout image with the uh, colored side down and I'm going to press lightly on it and turn little circles while pressing. <coughs> When you've uh, done this embossing, you will see 
that the pieces aren't flat anymore. They're a little bit rounded. This looks much better when you're finished. I have this completely prepared. Um, okay, what you want to do at this stage as well is um, your base part. Um, this was the when I take the first um, images. I had one uh, printed separately with space around it. Um, you can cut this into your base shape. Your base shape is the uh, base piece you're going to stack uh, your your paper piece your paper piecing on. You can cut this in any shape you want to. Um, in this case, I'm using circles. Um, but in my finished sample, I used a square. Um, you can use cardstock, or you can cut. Uh, hope I can show you this better. You can cut around the image and stack on that. But like I said, I used a circle for this one. Um, you want to cut. Uh, uh, your uh, base into the shape you want it to. If you want to add stitches like I did here, do it now. If you want to color on the uh, back, uh, like you can see, I also colored the, the uh, complete image with the gray color again, W5, uh, because of course this is going to be a base. Um, I did shading, I did the grass uh, in the base image, and I also distressed the edges. Everything you want to do to the base, you want to do before you start paper piecing. When you've done that, that's very hard to do, so don't do it now. Okay, I have all the Im all the little pieces done here, and as you can see, I've uh, uh, um, taken a little white sheet. All the little pieces are around it like a puzzle, in the uh, uh, order they should go onto the piece of paper. Uh, now I'm going to take my tweezers. I use Olba glue, which is a 3D kit. It's from the Netherlands, but it's available at Whimsy Stamps in America. And it's a, a perfect glue for this. Uh, there are more products in the, in the market, of course, but I, I love this one. Um, I'm going to start with, uh, decide what the, the, uh, is going to be most at the back. And in this case, it's uh, the tail. Um, I'm going to see uh, what the size and what the shape of this tail is that I cut out with the gray area. I'm going to put glue with this, these syringes that you also get at Whimsy Stamps on that part of my base. I'm going to take my tweezers, get my colored little piece of paper that's with the sides colored and that's been embossed and I'm going to put that on the base. Okay. If you have a little glue coming out, I'm not going to press, I'm just going to lie it, lay it into the glue. Just tap it maybe, but that's all you do. Next is going to be the body. So I'm going to take the body, take it next to my image, um, see where this is going to cover. It's a little piece of here, and it's here where it's going to cover the base. I'm going to take my little body and put that onto the image. You can tap it a little into the glue, but not press it, because if you press it, the glue will come out uh, at the sides and it will go flat, and you don't want it to go flat. Well, uh, next is going to be legs, and you're going to stack on and on until you have the complete image ready. Again, I've got something prepared. As you can see, here, most of the image has been done, only the face, the little head of the puppy needs to be done. So I'm going to add glue. And put the face on top. As you can see the glue stays flexible for several minutes so you can still move the little pieces around a little. I 
do this very carefully with my tweezers. Okay. Next is this ear flap. And a tiny little nose. And when I have a little bit too much glue, I use the top of my tweezers. I have a little paper towel lying next to me. I just rub that off. Take a little bit down up. And now the finishing part is the nose. Carefully placing that on top. Tap it into place. Okay, not pressing, just tapping. Because I want it to be 3D. I don't want it to be flat. And now as you can see, the glue is very strong. I can keep it upside down now right away. Keeps it perfectly into place. And this is my image. Completely 3D paper piece. The image is done. And I turned this into this finished product with the little tag that goes into that and that's what I wanted to show you today I hope I made everything clear if you have any questions please ask them in the comments below and I'll be glad to answer them for you thank you very much bye bye